What's going on guys, your boy Terabyte Reacts here, back with another reaction, and today we are jumping into a theory video for Game of Thrones. Um, This one was a little bit off cuff, this is what's west of Westeros, okay? I remember Arya asking this question, um, saying something about this, um, back, I don't remember when, I think it was when she was, when was it? Uh... I think it was when she was with um, Lady Crane. I think it was after she got stabbed. Um, I I don't remember exactly, but I think she mentioned something there in that scene when after um, when she went to Lady Crane. Lady Crane was was helping her to um, you know to was helping her get better because she you know she was you know she got the wave stabbed her and whatever and she went there. Um, if I'm remembering it correctly, I think that's where she said something about what, what, you know, like what's west of Westeros or something like that. So let's jump into this and see what this theory is all about. I'm happy to see it. So let's go. It's only 10 minutes long. Then we're going to jump into the longer ones. Okay. So let's go. Let's go. Let's go. In season six of Game of Thrones, Arya says she wants to go west of Westeros to yeah. see the edge of the world. West of Westeros is where all the maps stop. No one knows what's beyond the Sunset Sea, but some have tried to find out. One of Arya's ancestors, Brandon the Shipwright, sailed west across the Sunset Sea, oh, really? and he was never seen again. <laughs> the tomb in Winterfell is empty. Some crazy ironborn on the island of Lonely Light believe there's a paradise in the West, a land without winter or want, but all, that okay. all they've ever found is boundless grey sea. One of Daenerys's ancestors, Queen Rhaenys Targaryen, planned to fly her dragon across the sea, but she and her dragon died before she could try. So the Sunset Sea is a mystery, but there's one person who went further west than anyone else. 250 years ago, Alyssa Farman was the daughter of the Lord of Fair Isle, an island off the Westerlands by the Sunset Sea. Alyssa was kind of like Arya, a rebellious, wild-spirited girl. She was an archer and a singer, loved horses and dogs, but her great love was sailing. She spent most of her childhood on ships. As a teenager, she sailed her own boat, voyaging north to Bear Island and south to the Arbor. But her dream was to sail west and find strange lands beyond the Sunset Sea. Alyssa's brother, Andrew, married Raina Targaryen, a widowed queen of two different kings. It was weird that a queen would marry into a minor noble family like the Farmans, and Andrew was a pretty unimpressive husband. Raina didn't seem that into him. She was closer with Alyssa. It's hinted that Raina was gay, and that she and Alyssa were in love. So, for a year, Raina and Alyssa and friends lived on Fair Isle. They were the centre of court life, and went on joyrides on Raina's dragon, Dreamfire. But the Lord of Fair Isle got sick of Raina dominating his island, and of her dragon eating his sheep. So, he asked her to leave. He wanted Alyssa to stay and get married, but like Arya, Alyssa didn't want to marry some lord, so she left home with Raina. For a month, they mooched off the Lannisters at Casterly Rock, and enjoyed the hospitality of the wealthiest house in Westeros. But it turned out, shockingly, that the Lannisters were scheming, so Raina and co. left the Rock and toured the Westerlands and Riverlands for a while. As the young daughter of a minor noble family, Alyssa got to travel across Westeros with her love, the Dragon Queen. But eventually, Raina settled on Dragonstone, the Targaryen island, and Alyssa wasn't happy there. She wanted to build a ship and return to her wide western seas. Raina refused, and their relationship broke down. So Alyssa left Dragonstone, and on her way out, she stole three of Raina's dragon eggs. Alyssa went to Pentos, then Bravos, and sold the eggs to the Sea Lord of Bravos. She used the money to build the ship of her dreams, the Sun Chaser, designed for deep waters and long voyages. Alyssa planned to sail west. The Targaryens, meanwhile, lost their shit. The theft of their eggs meant that someone outside their family could get dragons, which is like someone outside your country getting nukes. 
They hope that without the heat of Dragonstone, the eggs will turn to stone. That way, some spicemonger in Pentos will only have three very costly stones. Hundreds of years later, in Book 1 of Game of Thrones, Illyrio Mepatis, a cheesemonger of Pentos, gives Daenerys three dragon eggs. This is exactly what I was thinking. That is it these three eggs that Daenerys ended up getting. You know? Eggs, which he says have turned to stone. Three stone eggs from a manga in Pentos. The language is the same, hinting that Danny's eggs are the same eggs that Alyssa stole hundreds of years ago. Daenerys's whole story might not have happened if it weren't for Alyssa Farman. But author George Martin does say that this is meant to be ambiguous, not so. <laughs> yeah, right. But Alyssa <laughs> built her ship, the Sun Chaser. And from Bravos, she sailed down the narrow sea, dodging pirates, went around dawn, and came to Old Town, the city of the Citadel and the High Tower. Alyssa knew that the Targaryens were hunting her for their eggs, but she needed a crew, people who believed in her mission to find new lands in the West. Which was difficult, because many people believed that the world just ends in the West, with walls of fire and boiling seas, or black fogs that go on forever. But the Maesters, and author George Martin, say that the world of Game of Thrones is round, like ours. So the West must eventually connect to the Far East, to the lands of Yi Ti and Ashai. A Western trade route to these places would be worth a fortune in silks and spices. But Alyssa's dream was bigger than money. She believed that the world was far larger and far stranger than the Maesters imagine. She envisioned new undiscovered lands in between Westeros and Essos, with sundering rivers and plains, green islands, strange beasts, and golden cities beneath strange stars. Westeros is kind of like Britain, Essos is like Europe and Asia, and Sothorios like Africa, so maybe there's a continent to the west like America. Alyssa hoped to find it. As she looked for a crew, Eustace and Norman Hightower came to question her, but Alyssa convinced them to join her mission, adding their ships to hers. She gathered a crew, and just as the Targaryens were closing in, Alyssa left Old Town with three ships and sailed west. Three years later, one ship returned. Eustace and his ship came ragged and exhausted back to Old Town, and Eustace told the story of Alyssa's voyage. He said that at first it was smooth sailing, but a month in, they were hit by storms. Norman's ship was struck by lightning and sank. Some sailors said they saw a kraken. But Alyssa and Eustace's ships survived, and they found land, three small islands, further to the west than any known land. Alyssa named the islands Aegon, Visenya, and Rhaenys. So Rhaenys Targaryen, who died before she got to fly west, had an island named for her in the far sunset sea. Alyssa explored her new islands and found new spices, pink fruits, and huge grey lizards with venomous bites. Alyssa wanted to sail further west to discover more new land, but Eustace and his crew were scared and turned back home. Eustace spent a year stuck on Sothorios, and his crew almost all died, but some Summer Islanders helped them back to Old Town. Go watch our video about Sothorios and the East. As for Alyssa, she vanished to the west, still searching for lands beyond the Sunset Sea. She was never seen again. Except... Decades later, a famous mariner called Corlys Velaryon visited a shy in the far, far east. And there, he glimpsed an old and weathered ship that he said could only have been Sun Chaser, Alyssa's ship. So maybe Alyssa made it all the way across the world. She could have seen new lands and crossed the Americas before arriving at a shy from the east. And one theory goes further. In Book 2, Daenerys meets Quaith, a shadowbinder from a shy. And Quaith says, to go north, you must journey south, to reach the west, you must go east, just like Elissa goes west to reach the east. So some fans speculate that Quaith is Elissa, that she learned magic in Ashai and lengthened her life, just like Melisandre of Ashai lengthens her life. Maybe the reason why Quaith Elissa helps Daenerys is because she reminds her of Raina, the dragon queen who Elissa once loved. The whole reason why Quaith comes to Danny in the first place is to see her dragons. 
the dragons that hatched from the eggs that Alyssa stole. So this is just speculation, but it's possible that Alyssa Farman still lives as a 250-year-old magician with a cool mask and a love for geography. It's also possible that Alyssa just died at sea or on some unknown land. But what we do know is that Alyssa rebelled against her family and loved a dragon queen. She travelled across Westeros and beyond, following a dream to see sights yet unseen. And maybe rebellious Arya could do the same. Like Alyssa, she could reject the life that others chose for her. She could escape the violence and horror that she suffered. Like Alyssa, Arya could sail west, chasing the sun. Of course, circumnavigating the globe takes more than an adventurous spirit. Naval navigation without modern technology involves a lot of math, geometry, trigonometry, astronomy. But people have done it for thousands of years. The ancient Greeks accurately calculated the size of the Earth. Columbus and Magellan knew that the world was round. Maybe Alyssa Farman did too, and that's how she knew there was land to the west. Maybe Alyssa Farman used Brilliant. Brilliant is a learning site with interactive challenges teaching maths For and science. Real, bruh. It's better than a lecture or video because it has That's you actually segue, solving though. problems yourself <laughs> at your own pace with guides and solutions oh to help my you God. through. It starts with basic stuff, then more advanced, then whatever this is. With Brilliant, <laughs> you can find out. What? It's surprisingly easy what? and fun to learn all the concepts that you miss oh at school my God. and to become a That's little bit hilarious. smarter each day. Sign up for free at brilliant.org slash altshiftx. The first 200 people get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thanks to patrons Tom Salt, Will Devon, Rebecca Radillo, Katie Balfour, Jennifer, Sarah Hefferin, Ray... Alright, so... Shout out to Ashifex, man. He, he's the real one out here. But that theory... I would believe it. I would believe it. If 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 it is so, I would I would believe it, and there's a lot of reasons why I'm saying that I would believe it, because all this stuff is like back backstory to the story that we know, right? So, I mean, that's the first thing that came to my mind was oh, dragon eggs turn into stone. The first thing that came to mind was the three eggs that they gave to Daenerys and then when you talk about Pentos the guy got it from Pentos you know just pulling the dots together in my head from what I remember before he even said it you saw my face and I was like oh mm, mm, you know what I'm saying so it's it's just that these theories man and that's what I'm saying man it's just there's just so many different things that you can pull together just from the information that you get from the books from everything that George is uh, has put out there you know what i'm saying he did it for this very reason is to create this kind of community where we're just sitting now having countless debates about what is what and what could be possible and this and that and have all of these little strings you know what i'm saying all these little strings that you can pull on and see what uh, and see what comes of it is just great man i never and, and a lot of people say all right i get it that token or token or whatever you how you want to um I, I say token right but some people say token right i knew that he inspired george mr mark right i know he inspired him but i never had this with with lord of the rings i never got this i never got um i know there are some die hard Lord of the Rings fans out there. Don't get me wrong. I know it. Just like how you have diehard Star Wars fans, you know, and they know the lore behind it. You know what I'm saying? And I get it, man. I get it. But I just never had that experience that what I'm experiencing with Game of Thrones when it comes on to a book that turned into a TV show. You know, I just uh, never had that experience with any other show it's just with this show you just want to keep looking and looking and looking and looking and looking <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you want to just keep looking for stuff that 
you know, that are so even, even though it's far fetched, it still could be possible. You know what I'm saying? So I'm happy. I'm happy, man, that I'm, that you guys are taking this journey with me. So that, let me know what you think about what's West of Westeros. I think this could be a possibility. Um, um, very interesting that what that a target well not really i mean it's interesting to learn that they not only did they um incest but you know it's possible that you know they they could be gay because there's really no there were people there were bisexual people in the show was there anybody that was gay like outright gay in the uh, yes what, what am i talking about but um what's his face um, <laughs> Renly was gay. Um, we never had any lesbians though. We had people who were bisexual, but nobody that was outright lesbian in the show, right? I don't think so. We had, we had, um, you had dudes who like dudes, but I don't, I mean, you had, um, bisexual ladies but there were never whether that was like i'm just into women you know what i'm saying like there was nobody there was no woman in the show that was really like that that i can remember i know there were dudes that like dudes you had um you had renley marjorie's brother um i think that other dude i think he was bisexual though that what's his name oscar uh oscar that's his name the dude that that ratted out everybody to the highest sparrow that is this bitch ass <laughs> you know so all right so yeah man that was pretty cool to see that was a very good video um if it is a possibility i would love to see aria go off into the sunset like that even though i see her as a warrior type not a I don't see her. I know she asked the question, but I, I don't think she's going to do that. I think she's going to realize her that she has way more responsibility than to just leave everything, you know, and just go into the sunset. That would be lovely, though, if she did. Um, but I don't think she will. Anyways, but. Yeah, man. It's been a great journey. I'm going to jump into the next one. So see you on the next one. Remember to subscribe. This is the first time you're watching me. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a like on the video, and also leave a comment in the comment section. We have a great community over here, man. We talk about all things Game of Thrones. We talk about other stuff, too, that I do on the channel. But Game of Thrones is the main thing we do over here. So thank you guys for watching. Again, thank you guys for supporting the videos. I really appreciate it. So far, so good. I'm trying to get more support, man, but it, it's, I'm just getting so much backlash from, from, from YouTube. Like everything has gone down since I, since I did Game of Thrones, um, the reactions to the, to the show, you know, everything has gone down. My views are down. My watch time is down. Everything is down because I can't get my other videos up on YouTube. Everything is just getting blocked and I have to find other means. But anyways, in any case, man, thank you guys for supporting the guys who are, con you know, consistent with the channel and the guys who are just coming in. I really appreciate y'all. And thank you guys for watching. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Terabyte Reacts, and peace.